بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله هو وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off So we uh, stopped here this chapter Al-Hisab wal-Mizan So the account or the reckoning uh, and the mizan, <coughs> the scales. <coughs> so the Sheikh he says we're on point seventy-two down here. <coughs> so then the Sheikh he says, "Min amal yom al qiyama al hisab wal mizanu." الحساب بمعنى مناقشة أهل المعاصي فالمسلمون على أقسام يوم القيامة. So the Sheikh says, so from the from what will occur uh, on the day of uh, judgment on يوم القيامة is the الحساب and the ميزان. So the uh, being taken to account um, or being reckoned with and the ميزان the scales. And the Sheikh says that the uh, the reckoning um, it means uh, a discussion with uh, the people of uh, disobedience about the deeds. So then the Sheikh says that the Muslims are upon categories, are upon categories with regards to this. They're upon categories on the day of judgment. So then the Sheikh breaks these categories down for us. He says, Al Qism al Awalu minhum man la yuhasib wa yadhul jannah bila hisab wa la azab. Kama fi hadith al Sabaina alfan al Ladina yadhulun al jannata bila hisab wa la azab. So then the first category. Of them is the ones who will not be taken to account and they will enter paradise without an account or reckoning nor any punishment. As comes in the hadith regarding the 70,000 people or individuals that will enter uh, Jannah without reckoning and without any punishment. Then the second category, category the Sheikh says, Al Qismu Thani Min Al Nas Man Yuhasib O Man Yuhasib Hisab and Yasira Wahu Al Ard Fakat La Yuhasib Hisab Munakasha Wa Inna Ma Yuhasib Hisab Ard Fakat Wahada Aidan Min Al Suada Allah Ta'ala فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَصَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا So that's from Surah Al-Inshikah, verse 7 to 9. So the second category of people are those who will have an easy reckoning, an easy one. They'll have an easy account. And that is, they'll just be shown their account. It'll just be a display of what they did. They won't be taken to account or reckoned with uh, such as that where a discussion is required. And rather, they will have a reckoning that's just a display of what they did, a display of their deeds, what they've done. Yeah? And this is also, so whoever falls into this category is also from those happy People, the ones who are going to be happy on that day. And then the Sheikh quotes an ayah which we read in Arabic, and we will get the meaning of this ayah, inshallah. Give me a second. 
سوره الانشقاق في قوت سوره الانشقاق بس 7 9 so 3 verses then as for him who will be given his record in his right hand he surely will receive an easy reckoning and will return to his family in joy he'll be happy and joyous and then the third category al qism al thalith man yuhasabu hisab hisab al munaqasha hisab al munaqasha wa hada taht al khatar li qawlihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man nuqish al hisab ghadiba amma al kufar okay let's just stop there so then the sheikh says the third type or the third category of people those who will will receive a reckoning and it will require discussion of their deeds the munakasha and this is in this situation that person is in danger grave danger and that's because of the saying of the prophet the narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, where the sheikh quoted a uh, part of the hadith here that whoever uh, whoever is reckoned with in this way where there's a discussion is required uh, with regards to his hisab is reckoning then he'll be punished so that's to pay attention there to that so then the sheikh continues he says am al kufar faqad faqad ikhtulifa al ulama fihim hal yuhasabuna aw la yuhasabun fa min al ulama man yaqul in al kufar la yuhasabun li annahum laysa lahum hasanat wa inna ma yadhhabu bihim ila an nar li annahum laysa lahum hasanat wa min al ulama man yaqul innahum yuhasabuna hisab taqdir ay bi a'malihim wa kufrihim wa ilhadihim thumma yadhhabu bihim ila an nar so then the sheikh he says in this paragraph towards the end of this page here and going into the next page the sheikh he says hafizullah he says as for the disbelievers so then he says that the people of knowledge have have um, differed with regards to the reckoning in this situation <clears throat> will they be reckoned with or will they not be reckoned with and so from so from so from some of the people of knowledge a group of them they say that the disbelievers will not be reckoned with because they don't have any good deeds with them and they will be taken to the hell fire because they don't have any good deeds they have nothing good with them they have brought nothing with them basically except bad and there's a group of scholars who say have the view that they say that they will be reckoned with but it will be a reckoning it will just be like a report they will be shown what they did or what they used to do with regards to their deeds and their actions you know their disbelief and their their whether they you know the atheism and the disbelief and other things that they used to do and then they will be taken to the hell fire so this is the uh, two different views uh, of people of knowledge so then the sheikh he says wal mizan so that's the hisab that's the reckoning or the account being taken to account now we move on to al mizan the scales so the sheikh he says here wal mizan ma'nahu al alatu allati tuzanu biha a'mal al ibadi tuda'u al hasanat fi kiffat fi kiffat wa sayiat fi kiffa qala ta'ala فمن ثقلت موازينه فاولئك هم المفلحون ومن خفت موازينه فاولئك الذين خسروا انفسهم نص من سوره المؤمنون verse 102 to 103 فاذا ثقلت السيئات خسر الانسان واذا ثقلت الحسنات ربح الانسان so then in this paragraph the sheikh said it says al-mizan so the original author Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah he says al mizan and Sheikh Sadr al Fawzan hafizullah explains he says meaning the uh, the tool that's used to weigh like a scale as we know scale in english scale a weighing scale like a weighing scale yeah right like the old like you know you would say uh, the scales right keep it simple scales everybody is familiar with that and so by it the uh, the deeds of the servants will be the good deeds 
in one of the scales of, of uh, 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 and, and and the bad deeds in the other scale. Two scales, yeah. As in the two the other side, yeah. As you know, with regards to the scales, and then. Uh, the Shaykh quotes an ayah here. He says, "Qala Taala," and so we will we, we read this in Arabic. So let's the meaning. This is from Surah Al-Mu'minun, like we had said earlier. So let's go to Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse one hundred and two to one hundred and three. Those whose scales of good deeds are heavy, these days fall, and those whose scales of good deeds are light, they are those who lose their own selves in hell. Will they abide? So then the Sheikh at the bottom of this paragraph, he said at the end of this paragraph, he says, so whoever's, so whoever's bad deeds, right, are heavier. So if your bads are heavier than your good deeds, then you've lost in the bad tradition. And whoever's good deeds outweigh bad deeds, then they've profited and they're in a good position. Yeah. So then the Sheikh continues, he says, هذا الميزان ميزان الأعمال كذلك من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فحسابه يسير ومن أوتي كتابه بشماله فحسابه عسير وسير الأحوال والأخطار جسيمة ومن خطر إلى خطر في مواقف القيامة والحساب الحشر هذه أمور هائلة لو فكرنا فيها So then the Sheikh in this paragraph he says he says that these the this scale is a scale of of, uh, of deeds it, it, you know it weighs deeds it measures the deeds likewise the Sheikh says the Sheikh says like that whoever is given his book in his right hand then his reckoning will be easy he'll have an easy reckoning and whoever whoever is given his book in his left hand, then he's going to be difficult. His reckoning is going to be difficult. And so obviously the affairs are going to be difficult. It'll be in a fair, it'll be dangerous situation for that person. And, you know, will be, in, uh, will be essentially will be a big problem for that person. So, it, These the reckon uh, if we consider the reckoning, for example, and we ponder over, um, you know, uh, you know, being gathered on the day of resurrection, then these the sheikh says that these affairs are great, the great affairs. You know, if we think about them and think, yeah, think and ponder over them. So then. The Sheikh moves on to move on to point seventy three in the book. The Sheikh he says, "Allahu man kaliba bil baath kafara, li anhu jahda ruknan min arkan al iman, wa li anhu mukhdib lillah, wa li rusul, wa li rusulhi, wa li kutubhi, li an Allah jalla wa la akhbar an al baath, wa al rusul akhbarat an al baath, wa al kutub akhbarat an al baath." فمن أنكره فهو كافر ودليل قوله تعالى زعم الذين كفروا الزعم هو الكذب أن يبعثوا فدلت العاية على أن أن إنكار البعث كف يقولون ليس بعد الموت بعث المشركون وعبدة الأسنام في أهد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كانوا يجادلون بالبعث أإذا كنا عظاما نخرة قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة وقالوا من يحجي العظام وهي رمين ومن مجادلتهم أيعدكم أنكم إذا متم وكنتم تراب وعظاما أنكم مخرجون هيهات هيهات لما توعدون إلى غير ذلك من مقالات الكفار من الأمم السابقة ومن ومن المشركين في أهد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن كذب بالبعث 
فهو ما هؤلاء الكفرة. So then in this uh, longer paragraph, the Sheikh he says, and his speech, referring back to the original author of the book, saying that whoever lies and denies uh, the resurrection, then he has fallen into disbelief because he has rejected and denied and uh, rejected and refused to believe in a pillar from the pillars of Al-Iman. And as we know from those six pillars, if we have a doubt or don't believe in any of any of even one pillar from those pillars, all of them are void. So uh, in this situation, the person who denies the resurrection, which is part of Al-Iman, then in this situation, the person falls into disbelief. Why? Because if you look into it a little bit deeper, then the Sheikh, he says here, because this this person, on this type of belief, he is lying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying Allah has lied. He's saying that it's not the truth. He's saying that the messengers, are not, they've not come the truth. And the books, that the revealed books, the revealed books are also not truthful. Then the Sheikh says, because Allah Jalla wa ala, informed us regarding the resurrection the messengers have informed their respective people about uh, the resurrection and our prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us and so every messenger and prophet has informed their people about the resurrection and the books that have been revealed include They have all informed people regarding the resurrection. But then the Sheikh is so whoever rejects it and denies or this or rejects it, then he is a believer. And the evidence, the speech of Allah and we mentioned this ayah earlier, Zamla the and as in that those people, they disbelieve, they lied, they lied. Yeah, and the Sheikh says, Azam, the word Zam here, it means lie, lying, yeah, disbelieve and lying, that, that they won't be resurrected. So then the Sheikh says that uh, here, where here, unlay yubathu, meaning that they won't be resurrected, that they lie about this and that they don't believe in. Right? And this demonstrates to us that rejecting the resurrection is disbelief. They say, you know, after death, there isn't resurrection after death. And the mushrikun, the polytheists, the worshippers of of uh, idols during the uh, the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu they, alaihi they, they used to argue uh, and they used to, yeah, they used to argue and debate about the about the resurrection. So then the Sheikh brings some more ayahs. He said, uh, ayahs here from the Quran. And um, we read them earlier, so if we go to the translation of these, so the first of them is from Surah al Naziat. Let's go there, Surah al Naziat 11 to 12. Even after we are crumbled bones, they say it would in that case be a return with loss. So, this is what they, they said that you know, if they are uh, crumbled bones, you know, we're not going to come back. You know, they believe that that's it, it's finished. We go into the earth, we'll never be raised will be crumbled bones disappeared into the earth. We'll never be able to be brought back. This is what they believed. And then, uh, last week, same ayah that we read from last week, was from Surah Yasin, verse 78. I read the whole ayah, and he puts forth for us a parable and forgets his own creation. He says, who will give life to these bones when they have rotted away and become dust? And that's what the, these people uh, believed. And also from their arguments, uh, uh, well, these are from Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 35 to 36. Let's go there. Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 35 to 36. Does he promise you that when you have died and have become dust and bones, you shall come out alive, resurrected? Far, very far is that which you are promised. Yeah. And the Sheikh says, and also other than that as well, from the the so-called uh, arguments of the disbelievers 
uh, from the previous nations and from the polytheists at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is, uh, you know, obviously their lies and their falsehood uh, with regards to uh, disbelieving in the in the resurrection. Yeah. So whoever so whoever falls into this, then he is with those disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa taala. So then, the Sheikh <coughs> he says, "لا ينكر البعث إلا كافر ولا كاد أمر الله جل وعلا نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يقسم به على على البعث." قال قل بلى وربي هذا قسم لا تبعثن ثم لا تنب لا تنبعن بما عملتم هذه الآية إحدى الآيات الثلاثة التي أمر الله نبيه فيها أن يقسم على البعض. So then the Sheikh he says in this paragraph that uh, that only a disbeliever denies and rejects the resurrection, and he also says here that uh, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered commanded his uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to swear by, like an oath, to swear by, uh, swear by the resurrection. That is going to come because it's in fact a, a thing, a situation that will happen. No doubt about that. With complete certainty. So then the Sheikh gives some examples like uh, from the Quran, as you can see here. Qul bala wa rabbi. You know. Saying, you know, that, agree, that, that, you know, agreement and then swearing by that that will happen, that the resurrection will occur. And then in the next ayah, it says that surely you will be, uh, you will be resurrected and you will be informed with that which you used to do. Yeah. And that's the whole point of, of the resurrection. The Sheikh will mention it as well here. So then the Sheikh, he says here, these, this is a, this is an ayah, or this is one of the ayahs from three ayahs which Allah commanded the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he swear by, swear upon, or swear by the resurrection that that is going to occur. <clears throat> and then the Sheikh says here, so he mentions the ayahs here, so in more detail. So he says, Al Ayatul Ula, so the first of these three ayahs, Al Ayatul Ula, Fi Surati Yunus, Yunus, Wa Yestam Bi Unaka Ahakunhu, Kul E wa Rabbi Innahu Lahak, Wama Antum Bi Mujizin. So we'll just take each, each uh, ayah uh, a step at a time. So let's go to Surah Yunus, verse 53. And they ask you, O oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to inform them, saying, Is it true, i.e., the torment and the establishment of the hour, the day of resurrection? Say, Yes, by my Lord, it is the very truth, and you cannot escape from it. So, so here, this is one of the ayahs, and, and in Arabic, when Sikh Qasim, this is like that oath, yeah, or that you swear by. So, it's here, particularly here, say, Yes, by my Lord, by my Lord, yeah. So, that's that's what that means there, yeah, specifically. <clears throat> then the Sheikh says, Athania fi surat al sabah and then the second ayah with regards to uh, this affair, right, is in surat sabah where Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Wa qala aladina kafaru la taatina saa, qul bala wa Rabbi la taatiyan kum alim al ghayb la ya la yazubu anhu mithqalu darratin fi al samawat wa la fi al ard." ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين ليجزي الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم فالله أمر, النب... أمر نبيه أن يقسم به على البعث ولا قيام الساعة yeah. so just a correction so the, the, Allah commanded the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to swear by him, I swear by Allah about the establishment of the resurrection. So the correction there, yeah. <clears throat> so swear by Allah 
with regards to the resurrection. Okay. <clears throat> let's go back. So, Surah to Sabah, let's go there and get the meaning of this ayah. Verse 3 to 4, Surah to Sabah. Those who disbelieve say, The hour will not come to us. Say, Yes, by my Lord, it will come to you. Allah, He is the all knower of the unseen. Not even the weight of an atom or a small ant or less than that or greater than it escapes from his knowledge in the heavens or in the earth. But it is in a clear book. I aloha mahfud. Yeah, clear book. That he may recompense those who believe in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, i.e. tawheed, and do righteous good deeds, those theirs is forgiveness and a generous provision, meaning paradise. So that's clear for us. And then the Shaykh adds here, he says, and Allah commanded his uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he swear by him regarding the resurrection and with regards to the establishment of the hour, ay Yawm al Qiyamah. Yeah? Then the third ayah, Al Ayat al Thalitha, Hiya Lati Ma'ana Min Surat al Taghabun. زَعْمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ لَنْ يُبَعْثُوا قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَثُنَّ ثُمَّ لَتَنُبْعَنَّ بِمَا عَمِلْتُمْ وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ فَالْحِكْمَةُ مِنَ الْبَعْثِ هِيَ جَزَاءُ الْعِبَادِ الْعَمَالِهِمْ وَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى لَتَنُبْعَنَّ أي لَتَجْزَعُنَّ أو لَتَجْزَنَّ yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, no, I'm reading this wrong. La Tukhberna bi amalikum wa tu jazuna wa tu jazuna biha. So, La Tukhberna bi amalikum wa tu jazuna biha. So, then the Sheikh says here, he says the third, ah, yeah, the third verse, it, it's what uh, we read earlier on. Uh, from Surah Al-Taghabun so we will read it again verse 7 Surah Al-Taghabun let's go there the disbelievers pretend that they will never be resurrected for the account say O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yes by my Lord you will certainly be resurrected then you will be informed of and recompensed for for, for what you did and that is easy for Allah so then the Shaykh says that the wisdom uh, behind the resurrection, it is, is, it is recompense. It is for the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala to be recompensed uh, with what they used to do, what they did in the dunya, in this worldly life. And his speech, فَقَوْلُوا تَعَالَى لَتَنَبَّأُنَّ And that you will be informed. I, you'll... But the Sheikh says, I, you'll be informed with regards to your actions and deeds and you will be recompensed accordingly to what you used to do. So then we'll just, uh, we're nearly finished for, for today. Um, it's a bit of a shorter lesson. So we've only got another couple of lessons to go, inshallah, we'll be finished. So um, <clears throat> starting a new chapter here. So I'll, I'll continue a little bit and then we'll stop. Then we move on to point 74 in the book. The Sheikh says, Al-Imanu bi Rusuli huwa ahadu arkan al-Iman al-Sitta. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Imanu an tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa Rusuli. Fal-Iman bi Rusul huwa ahadu arkan al-Iman fala buddha min al-Iman bi Rusul jami'ahum. Man min awwalihim ila akhirihim. فَمَنْ جَحَدَ رَسُولٌ وَاحِدًا مِنْهُمْ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ بِالْجَمِيعِ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَيَقُولُونَ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ وَنَكْفُرُ بِبَعْضٍ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ حَقًّا وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ بجميع الرسل من أولهم إلى آخره من سمى الله منهم في كتابه ومن لم يسم 
فإن الرسل كثيرون ولهذا جاء في الحديث أن عددهم مئة مئة ألف وأربعة وعشرون ألفا الرسل من ذلك ثلاثمائة ثلاثمائة وخمسة عشرة وخمسة عشرة جم من غفيرة. So uh, we'll just translate what we just read now and then inshallah we'll stop there. <coughs> Give me one second. Have a look at this. Okay, just just checking where uh, we want to stop. Uh, we want to stop here. So uh, let I'll just read this bit as well and then we'll translate. فهم رسل كثير منهم من سمى الله في كتابه ومنهم من لم يسمى فيجب علينا الإيمان بجميعهم من أول إلى آخره. Okay, that's the same thing that was said earlier. Okay, so then the Sheikh says here we move on to the next chapter and that is belief in the messengers. The prophets and messengers, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? And um, it is, the Shaykh says, it is one of the pillars of the six pillars of Iman. Uh, and then the Shaykh says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said here that uh, al-Iman, al-Iman, al-belief, Iman, is that you believe in Allah and the angels and the books and the messengers, as you remember from previous lessons. So the Sheikh says here that, so belief in the messengers, it is one of the pillars of Al-Iman, of belief, pillars of belief. One of the six pillars. So therefore it's incumbent that we believe in the messengers, all of them, from the first of them to the last of them. Whoever rejects even one messenger, he is a disbeliever in all of them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we read this ayah, so this is from Surah An-Nisa, verse 150 and 151. Let's go there. Uh, verse 150 to 151. Very those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and wish to make distinction between Allah and His messengers by believing in Allah and disbelieving in His messengers, saying, we believe in some but reject the others, or others and wish to adopt a way in between. They are in truth disbelievers and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating Torment. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, says, so it's incumbent uh, to have Iman in all, to have belief, and that we believe in all of the messengers from the start to the end. The ones that Allah has named and the ones that Allah has not named. For indeed, the Shaykh says, for indeed, the messengers are many. And then the Shaykh mentions the hadith, and uh, I did some research on the hadith. Uh, Previously, that, that, that there there some is a weak narration, but the meaning the meaning anyway is regarding that there there are many messengers, you know, thousands and thousands. There's many many messengers that were sent to their people. Yeah, that's the point. And then the sheikh mentions here in this last paragraph where we're going to finish for today. Uh, the sheikh says there are many messengers uh, that Allah has named, and uh, from those who that He hasn't named, and we, we're not informed about their names. However. It's obligatory upon us to have belief and to believe in all of them from the start of them to the end of to the last of them from the first of them to the last of them and then uh, there's just a part here that um uh, the, the, uh, in, in the in the uh, this part which uh, I haven't read so just give me one second so we'll just finish off here as well let me just read this so we don't miss anything so then uh, the sheikh says here uh, from the original part of the book wa arsala Allah wa arsala Allah rusuli mubashirina wa mundirin wa dalilu qawlu ta'ala rusulan mubashirina wa mundirin la illa yakuna lin nasi ala Allah hujjatun ba'da rusul wa kana Allah azizan hakima so then uh, this is just the start of uh, this chapter that we've just read into and that is that Allah sent all of the messengers Allah sent all of the messengers as bearers of glad tidings and likewise warnings warning the people as well bringing the good news but also warning the people of the of the potential punishment that they could face and then the sheikh says and the evidence of that is the speech of uh, Allah uh, which we read in Arabic is from Surah An-Nisa also uh, verse 165 let's read it Messenger as bearers of good news as well as of warning in order that mankind should have no plea against Allah after the messengers and Allah is ever all powerful all wise 
So that's a proof uh, for the uh, against the people that 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 they, they can't say on the day of judgment. Oh, you know, like nobody came to us. We weren't warned. They can't they can't bring that as any uh, evidence because all the messengers have been sent to their respective peoples. Yeah. So that concludes that. Let me just check one thing. Just check just to make sure we haven't missed anything. I haven't missed anything. Okay, we'll stop there, inshallah. We will stop there. We'll stop there and we'll continue from here. Point fifty, point seventy five, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.